Welcome to my channel. Hi, last week I filmed two videos. One of them, I wrote the sub metro orange red line and checked out the young, vibrant side of Korea Town in Los Angeles, California after attending there an early child education workshop. The second video that I filmed on a different day, I took a road trip adventure right over my car to visit my favorite happiest places on earth, Disneyland and Disney California Adventure Park. I headed on over to the Disney California Adventure Park to celebrate for the first time since they launched it for the first time this year in 2017, the Chinese Lunar New Year and Spring Festival celebrations there. It is the year of the road. going to be a talking vlog video edition where I'm going to be discussing things that I did not film and talk about in either my Koreatown video and Disney Downtown adventure video. I'm going to start with my Koreatown visit video. A while back, I signed up for another early childhood education workshop over at the CCRC website. I'll link in the down, I'll link the link in the description box below. So if you live in Southern California and you want to register for this website, and you're also an early childhood education teacher or an educator, maybe you're someone who owns your own home daycare, you're a Head Start teacher, you work for Montessori, whatever it is that you do in the early childhood education department, you all must be aware and probably either you know or if you don't know, you are required to take every five years 105 hours of either classes or you can do a project where a principal signs it off or some administrator that's above you so you can receive your updated and renewed child development permit with site supervision. So after registering for the course, I decided to look up what is nearby to check out for coffee and a croissant near the workshop where I was being held at the Pathways office, which is right next to the uh, union that us teachers are a part of when you work for a school district in Southern California. So I'm looking at the map of my computer and I'm noticing that there is only a French bakery that is nearby the place where I'm going to take the workshop and it's right off of the subway stop. Supposedly it's a block up, I guess. When I get there to Koreatown, I recheck on my phone to make sure it was close. And you're probably, by the way, thinking, um, why didn't you just go to a Koreatown bakery? You know, you're in Koreatown, where it's all a bunch of Korean places for boba and lots of goodies. Well, let me tell you, right next to where they were holding our workshop at the Pathway building that's above a bank, next to the teacher's uh, union uh, building, they didn't have any Koreatown bakeries. The closest that they have was Cafe Mermaid that I had to check out because the French bakery that I initially wanted to go to was a ways away, so it wasn't just one block away. You had to walk like 10, 12, 15 minutes to go up there. Since I didn't have that much time, I decided to go to the closest one. After reading the reviews and seeing what you Yelpers and other People said about this place, it looked like a really, really good place. And after eating there and checking out their coffee and croissant, I have to tell you, it's a really, really good place. So go watch my video and check that out. Secondly, I wanted to film the part where I explain about how our LA area works. That didn't make it into that Koreatown visit video either. One of the big cities we have in Southern California is called the Greater Los Angeles. Except we don't call it the Greater or the Great or Greatness, whatever it may be that you might think of it. We actually say Los Angeles in Southern California. Within Los Angeles, you have your beach towns such as Malibu, Santa Monica, Venice, Marina del Rey, and all other types of beach town. Then when you go to the inner part of LA, you have West LA, Brentwood, 
Westwood. Then you get into West Hollywood, which is a Russian area. Beverly Hills area, another LA area called the Pico Robertson area, where a lot of Orthodox Jews live there. And then we get into what's called neighborhoods. And this one is talking about the Korea town that I visited. Go check out my video if you haven't watched it. You also have other areas like downtown, Chinatown, Filipino town, MacArthur Park, Little Tokyo Japanese town, just to name a few. The reason I call them neighborhoods is because when you send a mail there or you're receiving a package from there or you're going to a restaurant or a store, you're not going to see a, you know, place that has Korea town, comma, California, and then zip code. You're going to see Los Angeles, comma, CA, and then it will be the zip code. So this is just something for you to watch out when you are Google searching or whatever search engine you use. I usually end up using Safari or Google. It's one of my favorite search engines. So when I type in there, I type in, let's say I wanted to go to Mermaid Cafe, Cafe Mermaid, which is what I checked out. I went in, I typed it in, then I type in Koreatown, Los Angeles, comma, California. Now we'll get into my second video where I did a day road trip adventure in visiting one of my favorite happiest places on earth parks disneyland and disney california adventure park i headed on over to the disney california adventure site to celebrate this chinese new year 2017 year of the rooster i am year of the rat if you want to know what animal of the year you are Go online, Google search Chinese Zodiac calendar, type in the year you were born, and it'll tell you what animal you are. A few items that I bought cheaper are you. There you go. These are my mini mouse ears. I call them mini mouse because it has a pink bow. If it has a red bow, I call it Mickey Mouse. I absolutely love these ears. Look at them. Look at up close. Look at how awesome they are. They have frills, a little, what is it called? Sparkly stuff on it. There's the bow. It's very, very similar and almost identical to the one you'd buy at the park. Except for a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot These cost me with tax and everything, seven something at the park. You'll be sure to spend between anywhere from $20 all the way to $24, $25, maybe $30. Bucks. This is a holiday gift from one of my clients. So here it is. Oh, let me just show it to you guys better. So this is the hat part. This is the Winnie the Pooh classic jacket. It is Winnie the Pooh. This jacket only cost the client who bought it for me 40 bucks with taxes and everything included. Now, you might add, now this is something that I asked the store. I really, really having the client spend this amount of money and getting a good deal. And the lady said yes. So I ended up doing some research and found out that if you get this jacket online or in the store, it's gonna cost you around 30 something to 40 bucks compared to the original price, which is 50 or 60 something dollars. I'm going to give you guys a tip and guide to saving money on Disney merchandising and what you can do to now or spend at the parks. So let's get started. First of all, Disney being Disney, because of its names, they can charge ridiculously high prices. I found that if you shop at places like Target, CVS, Party City, or online Amazon and eBay, just to name a few, you can find cheaper Disney merchandising. There are some things that you might not be able to buy elsewhere, and for that, you'd either have to go to the parks, such as Disney pins, I found them in, or in downtown Orange, they have like these vintage shops, they sell all kinds of uh, Disney pins that they don't sell anymore at the parks. I got one of them. I actually spent, I think it was $15. We bought it for my birthday one year. 
I think it was last year when I went with my hubby in laws and my brother in law. We went in honor of me and my brother in law's birthday to go there. And because they have not had a chance to see any of the updates in both of the parks, both my in laws and my brother in law, so we were able to go, all of us. Just to give you guys kind of a little side note, there is, oh, this is what I was going to tell you. And thank goodness I remembered because before I forget, you know, you never want to, you always want to say something before you actually forget it. On eBay, there's a section or something called you something. As soon as I uh, search it online and I find the link, I'll post it in the description box below. It's basically a site that's part of eBay where you can buy and sell pins. So if you don't want to buy pins at the store, you know, in Disney downtown or at either the parks or online, if you happen to find them, or by the way, you can actually trade pins. This is the note I was going to tell you. You can trade pins with cast members and other people that you see a pin. So if you have a pin you don't like that you got part of a mystery pack, you can give it to, you know, whoever it is and you want to trade. Or visiting or you live here in Southern California, we have an area a city called Citadel. There they have an outlet mall where they have a Disney outlet store. I've checked it out. It's not bad. Go there. Whether you're a SoCal resident or you're visiting from out of town, say another state, another long distance city or from around the world, wherever you are coming from, you will notice some differences when entering the uh, Disneyland parking lot. Both Disneyland and Disney California Adventure are in one area and it comes right after you exit the tram and you go through the downtown Disney area. Before you get to any of those areas, you have a parking lot called Mickey and Friends. This is where I usually park. Every year they raise prices, I've noticed, on their parking structure. So to park there if you don't have an annual pass or you come with just a Disneyland ticket or you're not with somebody who's getting you in free, you're going to have to pay $18 for a regular car. I don't remember on the top of my head what prices you're going to pay for an SUV or an RV, but they are higher. And I think it's $30, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, uh, for the preferred parking lot. I don't know why you need a parking lot, but if you're an annual pass holder like me, then you're in luck because if you have the one that comes with the parking, anytime you enter in the making friends or other parking lots to park, it is free. Now, once you get there, you park your car, you grab everything. Make sure to leave your selfie stick and your tripod at home. Now, a tripod has three legs, so there'll be two legs here, one leg on the front, or however you position it. For instance, my um, vlogging equipment right now, I have a leg on front, a leg on the side, and this is how I'm angling it. So just be aware of that. Now, on the website, it might say just selfie stick. Apparently, because these tripods, you can also hold them in your hand, they don't want you to get injured or safety reasons when you are on the rides. So basically they want you to enjoy the rides. And anyway, why would you film inside the rides? I usually don't because they even ask you not to film. Some places like Little Mermaids or the Pirates of the Caribbean people film. But it's really hard to capture stuff, especially with lighting. Because it's so dark inside the rides. I just, I usually don't bother. I'll wait till after the ride. Maybe I'll explain about the ride or how it went for me, you know, things like that or whatnot. So if you're to, if you're a YouTube vlogger like myself, or you love capturing, capturing, or you love capturing family moments, then just note your fancy little tripod or your selfie stick has to stay in the car. Now, if you forget this or you're not watching my video vlog right now or you're not tuning in, what they might do is, once you get to the TSA area, they'll ask you to return it back to the car, which usually meant you would have hopped on the tram, went all the way back to the parking lot, dropped it off there, and then go back again on the tram, going back to the parks. However, they made it quite easier now. If you park, at least I know only from Mickey and Friends parking lot, because from my experience, this is where I park. 
I don't know about the other parking lots, but I think they do too. So call ahead of time and ask. I know that once you get off of the Mickey and Friends parking area, there's going to be like an elevator and then there's these escalators that you go down. So right there, they're going to have security area. We're going to check all your bags. Then you're going to go wait in line to go on the tram. So if there's anything there you don't know what you can and cannot bring, or you are not allowed to bring, ask them. They'll be more than happy to friendly do a small talk with you and walk you through what you're allowed and not allowed. And you can basically just go back to your car, drop it off. And then when you go back, you can hop on the tram and go back. So these are just some things to note when you're arriving to the Disneyland Resort themed parks. Also, when you get to downtown Disney, right after you usually see an area where they have the security thing, it's not there. So if you're arriving on the different types of method that drops you off there, I'm not sure where they check you as far as the TSA security stuff. But just ask a hotel staff wherever you're staying. Notice in front of me my MacBook Pro laptop. And that is because it is going to help me out and to talk about the store that is inside the Disney California Adventure Park. Once you pass through the Buena Vista part, like Buena Vista Street, you're going to head into an area that's called Hollywood Lot Tour. And then right across from there, there's Animation Studio. Once you go through all of their activities that they offer there, such as learning to draw the face of one of the characters. And by the way, you never know what character they're going to draw. But here's an insider tip of someone who learned about this from my experience. When you go inside the Animation Academy, ask someone there who seems very friendly and nice to you. Make some small talk. Ask about how their day is going and ask if they'd be willing to tell you what character at what time are they going to draw. So when I went in one time, I wanted to catch Mickey. So I asked, how's your day going? Would you mind uh, telling me what time could we come back to catch drawing uh, Mickey? Because that is something we have not done yet. The lady kindly asked someone else because she wasn't really familiar with it. Since she was just walking from the store to go to her next um, area. Or she had to do something and the gentleman kindly told us over this will be not last year but the year before so this will be the year 2015 when we went for Hanukkah uh, this is what we ran into and we asked and they took care of it no problem they saw I had a little happy Hanukkah um, badge on you know it's my little Disney and it's hello menorah so they were really, really pleased about it so I went there, they took care of it, we were able to come back and get the character to draw. Um, we were able to make it to draw the face of Mickey, and then since we sat in the front row, this is how we got a free Mickey drawing from one of the artists there. So this is what I'm going to be talking about, how you can save money on having your very own drawing of a character. There's a store called Off the Page and it is in the Hollywood land area. And it says here, from wall to wall, everywhere in between, you will find no shortage of rare, rare and carefully crafted merchandising, including collectible artwork, animated film cells, limited edition prints and figurines, pins and vinylmation, resin ornaments, books, CDs, DVDs, books, and more. This is also a place where I bought a long, long time ago, many years ago, my Walt Disney collection book filled with all kinds of stuff about Mickey Mouse since he's one of my favorite, favorite, all-time old classic Disney characters, aside from all the other Disney characters, including Chippendale, Pluto, to name a few, Donald Duck, Daisy Duck. I also like Pluto, Winnie the Pooh, and the list will go on and on. So what's interesting about this particular shop is that when you go in, you'll notice on the right and the left hand side there'll be artists who are willing to offer you for a price 
to draw their drawing. Now, some people choose to do it anyways because, you know, it's a memorabilia done by an artist. They sign it. Me personally, like I said, I scored two of mine, the Piglet and the Mickey Mouse face ones, with the artist's signature for free. One of them I got as a birthday gift because I was wearing a birthday pin and sitting in the front. And the other one, that's how I got it. If you want to save money and do one yourself, not spend the 30 or more dollars, go home. You can trace one of your own characters on a specialized paper. Or what I usually do is I grab the kid Disney California, you know that paper you get in the animation studio where you learn how to draw the face of a character. I take it home. Sometimes if I don't feel like spending hours of drawing the character, I'll trace it, I'll make it really, really neat, do a special dye, and I give it as a gift. I highly, highly recommend to do that, so this way you're not shelling on spending tons of money. Now, if you want to buy one as a souvenir, you know you're not really good at drawing, go ahead and do so. Here's something my husband and I did do to save money on not buying actual, uh, this goes back to a little bit to the Disney merchandising. I guess I didn't really cover something. They have a lot of shirts there and jackets that are at the Disneyland, Disney California Adventure, and their main street downtown area where they have a big uh, World Disney shop. You can also buy them at the Disney store outlets and the Disney store in any of the malls if you have one. Now, if you want to save money on that, you can buy any t-shirt or whatnot. My husband and I did that. We googled online do-it-yourself, DIY do-it-yourself uh, project of how to make your own Mickey and other character shirts. So I looked it up on YouTube. My husband looked it up on his search through Pinterest. So we got some fabric. We went to Joann's. We cut out, you know, a Mickey like shape face, the little ears attached, and then we iron pressed it onto a sheet of the specialized materials that you have to get. So I highly, highly encourage you if you want to do that, go do a search on Pinterest, YouTube videos, whatever it is that you use to search, and find how to make your own Disney style shirts and transfer on those stuff. It was really awesome. If you're a Disney holic like me who loves Disneyland so much that you're willing to get an annual pass, come as much as you can every month, visiting both parks, you'll dine there, you'll eat all of the deliciously overhyped, overpriced food, you buy the merchandising as souvenirs, you buy a lanyard to collect all of the pins, you'll think of your favorite dream Disney vacation, whether it's staying there at the hotels like I did, or you're gonna want to take a Disney cruise. This is from my own personal experience on my and my guide on what you can do to not overspend at the park. I do have an annual pass, so I do save quite a bit on that because I pay per month. That's for one thing. Secondly, I usually don't pay for parking because it's part of my annual pass that I pay per month. Usually, what I do is I eat breakfast at home. This way, it saves me time and money. Now, if you want to eat with the characters for breakfast, I highly recommend with kids or without kids, go to the Storyteller Cafe. The food's really good. Go to uh, the Plaza Inn. I have not tried the Paradise um, Hotel, the Mickey and Friends one. I have yet to try that. But I have done Goofy's Kitchen twice. I got sick from the food twice, so my opinion, I think... If you don't feel good from the food, don't take your kids there, don't go there. But a lot of people go there, they don't get sick from the food. I guess it's just how you hit, you know, the experience. But I loved it because I got to meet the characters. They were dancing for you and taking the pictures. They were just amazingly awesome, putting on a wonderful, spectacular performance. If you're going to do that, go ahead and do that. I decided that day not to get breakfast or do any of the characters there. I ate some eggs and yogurt at home, and then with the two uh, rewards that I earned on my Starbucks card, I got my free coffee and croissants, and I drove up, headed on out to the Disney-themed parks. When I went to the Disney California Adventure Park, that's where I saw the big sign yeah, by, over by Mickey and Friends that that's where they were doing their 
Chinese Lunar New Year celebration year 2017. This is the first time, by the way, they launched it. You are the rooster. If you don't know already what animal zodiac year it is in the Chinese zodiac. So when I got there, I noticed that the Paradise Hotel, um, Paradise Pier area right there. I don't know why I said hotel. I meant not to say that. So it's actually Paradise where they have the Ferris wheel and the little rope, big, you know, upside down roller coaster. So right around in that area, they have kiosk, some shops there, and they have all these food areas that were turned into trying Chinese, Vietnamese, and Korean food. I got their Mickey Mouse shaped little um, sweet rice with the little um, gold sprinkle and the Vietnamese coffee. That sent me back about nine something dollars, so that's what I did. Then when I was done with the park, on the way home, I went to grab a croissant, a pretzel actually inside. When I grabbed the pretzel, it was only two something with my annual pass holder thing. So this is what I do not to overspend the money. I have been sharing with you things you can do to save money when going to the parks from my personal experience. But this is if you're traveling by yourself. Now what do you do if you're traveling with two or more people? So now I'm going to give you my guide from my experience on what you can do when you're traveling with a party of two or more and saving money when going to the parks. Now again, eat food at home if you're not planning to do any of the character dining options in the morning or if there's any that is offered in the evening. I think Goofy's Kitchen, don't quote me if I'm wrong, might offer a dinner dining character experience. I'm not sure. So, like I said, I ate at home. Usually, it's all the times when my husband and I go, we eat at home, we'll grab some coffee, or we'll buy coffee and load it up at home. So, you need energy when you drive there and back. Now, if you're going with, you know, say a family of four or five or more, you're probably going to have your own car. You're going to get in there and go there. If you want to rent a car not to do wear and tear on your vehicle, that's fine. I know some people that do that, they'll rent a car, or they'll like rent a hotel for the night, and then they'll go with a bunch of people, you'll get there. I did one year with a group of people, and what we did was, when we got to the park, we everyone ate at home, then we got there, we enjoyed all the rides as we could, we got a snack, and then afterwards we headed on out to celebrate my birthday dinner at a Mexican restaurant where I had a 30 off coupon, something like that. This was, you know, years ago when I first started dating my husband. He helped me coordinate all of this and we did that. So these are some things you can do when traveling in groups. So maybe someone drives, you guys can rent a car, maybe coordinate and whatnot. If your family you can take your own car or rent a car, eat at home, then plan out whatever it is you're going to do there. And you can also plan out, let's say, uh, merchandise into you. Maybe some of your friends have some things you can borrow so you can always wear to the park that day. Like I know my friend when she comes sometimes I let her wear a pin so this way she doesn't have to buy her own. Or maybe I'll have an extra Mickey ear for her if I ever get it at like Target. She can wear hers. I can wear mine. She actually I think has a pair at home because I know when we did my birthday she had it and stuff like that. She let me borrow hers. So I am going to end my vlog here and say thank you guys so much for watching. Here is my question for all of you from this vlog. I want to know what you did to save money when you went to the parks with say your family, someone else, or a large group of people. What did you guys do if you have any tips for us? And for my viewers, please comment in the box below. Or if you just want to share your experience of going to Disneyland and California Adventure, post your link below. I'll hopefully watch it or read your comments. Thank you so much once again for watching it. Please give it a thumbs up. If you have not subscribed to my channel, click on my little icon that's to the right of the video screen. Or you can click on my picture and channel name. Go there, subscribe, watch my videos. If you have not watched my Koreatown at Disney California Adventure day trips that I did the other week and filmed, please go ahead and watch those. Then you can come back and watch this video.
See you guys next time. Bye.